Amen. Thank you so much, my sister. I am so sorry. Uh, my network is on and off. I hope you can hear me now. Yes, we do. I am stuck in hospital. My mother is unwell, but in all things, we give thanks to God. And I want to pray that in the time we will have to share his word this evening, that the Lord will be glorified and that the devil, the enemy, will be put to shame. Can we start with a word of prayer? Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity you have given to us. Even when in the afternoon it looked impossible for me to be on call, I want to thank you that you have made a way for me to be able to encourage myself and these my brothers and sisters as we go through your word, especially this portion of Isaiah 60. Father, we want to pray that you will open our eyes to the riches of your grace in this particular word, that through your Holy Spirit, you will give us the grace to be those that arise and shine because indeed your glory has come before us and our light, our time has come. Bless us as we open your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, this month of October, like my sister has mentioned, we are reflecting on the theme of arising and shining, not for our own selves, but for the Lord. Our text this evening is Isaiah verse, uh, chapter 60 and verse 1. Permit me to read the first nine verses, even when we are going to be putting a lot of emphasis on the first two or three verses. This is what it says in my Bible. I am reading from the ESV version. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall overcome the earth, and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundancy of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. And verse, verse 6 says, A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Epa, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frank incense and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedah shall be gathered to you. The rams of Neboeth shall minister to you. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar and I will beautify my beautiful house. Who are these that fly like a cloud? and like doves to their widows. For the coastlands shall hope for me, the ships of Tashish first, to bring your children from afar, their silver and gold with them, for the name of the Lord your God, and for the Holy One of Israel. You know why? Because he has made you beautiful. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your word. Now, friends, the call for us this evening is to arise and shine. But to put a bit of context to our passage, Isaiah 60, if you read prior to chapter 60, that is verses uh, chapter 57, chapter 58, and chapter 59, you're going to see in these chapters that the prophet Isaiah is doing all he can. He is laboring to point out to Israel the fact that they have sinned and he is bold to point out their sin before them. He is bold to point out the evil in their midst. But as a prophet that gives hope, he not only points out their sin or evil, he is also quick to call these people to repentance so that they can turn to the Lord, to, so that they can turn to Jesus, hallelujah. So he tells them, this is the evil among you, and this is what you're doing. And he tells them throughout this particular book, that if you do not turn from your sin, if you do not repent and turn to God, the day of the Lord is coming and you will be consumed. That is punishment for those who even upon knowing their sin, they do not turn 
away from it. Now, verse one of chapter 58, if you can go a bit back with me, says this, Isaiah 58 and verse one, in his pursuit of calling them to repentance, the prophet says to them, cry aloud, do not hold back, lift up your voice like a trumpet, declare to my people their transgression to the house of Jacob, their sin. The prophet is making particular mention of their sin, is telling them you are a sinful people. This is the transgression before you. The Lord has called me to point it out to you so that you can put things right. He's telling them, if you do not turn to God, my people, people of Jacob, people of God, you will be ruined by the judgment of God that is yet to come. And as he proceeds to chapter 59, he says to them in verse 2, but your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, your sins have hidden his face from you. And so he says, you know what, Israel, you know what, children of God, you come to the Lord seeking his face. You want him to come through for you, but you have ignored the sin in your midst. And yet this sin is putting a chasm. This sin is kind of building a wall between you and God to the extent that even when you scream and shout, God, come to my rescue, your prayers are simply hitting the, 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 the wall. Like the, those times where you come to God in prayer, you're praying, but you feel like you're not breaking through. There is something hindering you. And so the prophet tells them in Isaiah 59, you know what? Behold, the Lord's hand is not too shortened, that it cannot come to save you or your ear is here dull, that it cannot hear. But something has gone wrong. Your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, your sins have hidden his face from you so that he cannot hear you even as you come to him to pray. And so friends, these chapters are a background for us to understand chapter 60. There is sin in the midst. They keep crying out to God, but the prophet tells them, unless you deal with a sin in your midst, the Lord will not come to your rescue. But as he comes to chapter 60, friends, he now begins to transition into a change of posture. Prior, there is sin, but now he's telling them, this is what God is calling you to do. You ought to go into action. There is a posture the Lord requires of you so that even when you raise up your hands before him, so that even as you come to him in prayer to pray, he will listen. And what posture is that? The posture is written for us in Isaiah 60. It is a posture of arising. It is a posture of waking up. Friends, when you go to bed in the night, there is a certain posture you take. None of us goes to bed and you sleep while standing. Many of us go to bed and the fact is as you sleep, you lay down. There is that posture of sleeping. You sleep, you put your head down. But as the Isaiah through the Lord as the Lord through Isaiah calls them, he's telling them, you know what? You have slept long enough in sin. The posture for us to take now is the posture of arising. And when you arise, friends, there is that, that notion behind arising of standing up. When you arise, it is as if you come to your senses. When you arise, you awake from slumber. When you arise, you wake up from sleep and you take on a posture that is very active. And so the Lord is saying to them through the prophet Isaiah, arise and shine, hallelujah. And he gives them the reason as to why he is calling them to arise. He tells them, arise, arise, you have been sleeping, now arise. The call is not only for them to arise, but also to shine as well. Now, the, the, the prophet is saying these interesting words at the beginning of chapter six. And I want to draw for you a picture of the context that the people are in that is calling to arise. The people the prophet is telling to arise, things around them seem gloomy, things around them are tough, They've gone through difficult and difficult situations. In fact, as they look around, they do not seem to see anything that is going to cause them to be excited. 
You know why? I want you to recall that before chapter six, the northern chapter 60, the northern kingdom had been destroyed by Syria. Remember when the Lord took them into the Syrian captivity? And as if that was not enough, Babylon arose to power and it took captive of Jerusalem and the people went into exile. And for 70 years, my brothers and sisters on call, these people suffered at the hands of their slave masters. These people had a terrible 70 years of suffering nonstop. They have had it's pretty rough. They've gone through difficult, difficult things. And the prophet is standing before them and is telling them, you know what? You are called to arise and shine. You are called to be joyful. You are called to shine out your light. And I am thinking at the back of their minds, they're asking themselves, what is it about our life that should cause us to be excited so we can arise and move out into joy and shine. Doesn't this man of God really, really know the tough things that we have gone through? My brother, my sister, even as I talk about arising and shining this evening, it is possible that as an individual, it is possible as a family, you're going through tough things. In fact, as I was driving my mother to hospital, I have ministry tonight, I have ministry tomorrow. And as my mother called me to tell me she's and well, she has come back from her work to talk about calling people to arise and be glad in the Lord. But are you sure this is a situation that calls for you to be joyful? My brother, my sister, you might be like me nursing someone in hospital right now. In fact, I am in the car trying to talk, but let me tell you, even when things around us are terrible, friends, those of us that believe in the Lord, we are not moved by the things we see we walk by faith and not by sight, hallelujah. So even when in the midst of the Uganda we are in, we have battled a pandemic of COVID that is seemingly coming to an end. And as it, 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 we were trying to settle down and now work on our economy, the economy crumbles. Even as the economy, we are trying to revive it as a nation. Lo and behold, we hear of reports of Ebola in Mubende. And there was another headline the other day uh, threatening to say it has come to our Kampala friends. Let me tell you, we might be going through difficult circumstances around us. But you know what? For those of us that hope in the Lord, our joy is joy that comes from within flowing outside. It is not a joy that comes from without. It is not a joy that is picked from situations around us. Because you know what? Situations around us will not always be glad and happy for us. But the Lord, through the prophet Isaiah, gives a prophetic word to these people. And he tells them, you know what? It might look as if everything around you is gloomy. It might look as if things around you do not seem to make sense. But even then, the call for you as children of God is to arise, friends. The call is for us to arise and not just to arise, for us to wake up from our sleep and slumber and take on a posture of those that have stood up, those that are going to stand out. Stand out by shining our light of Jesus to the people around us. And so the prophet tells them, you know what? The call is for you to arise. And why does he call them to do that? What is it that the prophet has at the back of his mind? With what confidence is this man of God standing up on his two feet to tell people that are going through suffering that they should arise and be glad and let the light of God shine through them? Why does he call them to that posture of arising, friends? He gives them the answer partly in that verse one of chapter 60. He tells them, you know what? Arise for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. So we are called to arise and shine. Why? Because 
our light has come. These people lived in a time looking into anticipation of the light of the world, Jesus, that would come to, the, to them to liberate them. Now, if these people lived with such a hope of a Messiah yet to come, friends, how much more should we that have attested of this Messiah coming to us live with hope? These people had hope stirred up because of the hope of the light coming. Remember that song that we sing about Jesus being the light of the world. We sing and say, light of the world, you step down into darkness. It opened my eyes and let me see. Light of the world, Jesus stepped down into darkness. These people see hoped for it, but we have lived and seen the reality of Jesus come glad because of the promise of Jesus yet to come. He tells them to arise and be glad because the glory of the Lord was risen upon them. Friends, this idea of light, this concept of light, we know what light does in our lives. Light, according to that passage in Matthew, dispels darkness no wonder we say that the this light should be stepped into darkness it opened our eyes through darkness so that the darkness is dispelled and people are able to have clear vision now the prophet is indirectly saying that when this light of the world comes into your life he will shine bright to you so that you will have a clear vision see where the lord is leading you and after that, he will shine so bright through you to attract nations so that people will come to Zion and be partakers of this light. Isn't that what the Lord tells Abraham, friends? That I will bless you so that through you nations will be blessed. Isaiah is reminding this nation of Israel of the call upon their lives. The call upon their lives is to be light, not light to their own selves, but light to the nations around them. Friends, this light signals arrival of redemption. No wonder in verse three we read that when redemption happens, when your nations see the redemption in you, they will also come. The light among you will be so bright to fathom and keep to yourself that it will draw nations so that they will also come and be partakers of this blessing in your midst. And I think that is why the prophet Isaiah says in verse in verse three, that nations shall come to your light, hallelujah, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. There is that beautiful song I love. Because I am blessed, kings shall come to, 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 to my rising, hallelujah. And, and, and you see, for kings to come and pay respects to the nation of Israel, they must see something of value within this nation. But for many of us, we have this light in us and we have forgotten this little Sunday school song of this little light of mine, let me let it shine. We are holding so much onto the light, we are not allowing it to shine. And in a way, we are hindering nations from coming to the knowledge of the Lord. So the prophet says, kings, the nations shall come to your light. Because why? Because you have let your light shine out so brightly. They have seen the benefits that this light is accomplishing in your life. And so they are coming to you to be partakers of this light. They are coming to you so that they can partake of what this light is able to accomplish in your life. Hallelujah. Nations will come to be warned to Jesus Christ as Messiah. And as I reflected on the remaining verses of this, of, this, of this passage, friends, my mind went back to the gospel account. Remember at the birth of Jesus, as these three magi come to the Lord, they carry with them beautiful things. They carry with them frank incense. They carry with them precious gifts to give to the Lord. And as they give these gifts to the Lord, they sing praises to the Lord. Lord. They sing praises to the Lord because of the gift of the son that has been given to them. 
and I thought to myself, you know what, this, the coming of these men is in a way a fulfillment of what the prophet Isaiah told the people of Israel in Isaiah chapter 60. He told them, you know what, kings will come. They will come carrying gifts for your Messiah. They will come carrying gifts for this light that has come in your midst. Friends, our position in Christ cannot be taken away from us because of the circumstances that we are going through. Even when my mother is in hospital trying to fight for her life, it does not take away the fact that I am a child of God that has joy in my heart. Joy not dependent on the circumstance of my mother, joy not dependent even on my own circumstance. So God is indirectly calling us this evening to be those that arise above the circumstances around us. God is calling us to arise and put our focus on him and ensure that irrespective of the things around us, irrespective of what the devil throws at us, we shine his light out so that nations will see this light and they will come to his knowledge. Hallelujah. That is the call upon my life. And I want to believe that is equally the call upon your life as a child of God on call this evening. Friends, we are called to arise because in the end, the enemies that come to fight us, the Lord will win to himself. The Lord will bring to conversion. Quickly run with me to Isaiah chapter 60 still, but verse 11, it says, your gates shall be continually open day and night. They shall not be shut that, pe that people may bring to you the wealth of nations with their kings lay lead, leading in procession. Hallelujah. The Lord will draw people to us because of the light that they see in us. But you know what? Even those that laugh at us and mock us because of our circumstances, their end will be that the Lord will draw not all of them, but some of them will be converted to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And that is exactly what verse 14 says of Isaiah 60. It says, the sons of those who afflicted you who afflicted you and all who despised you shall bow down at your feet. They shall call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. And again, even as I drove to hospital this evening, that the devil was trying to speak to me. You know what? You pray for people that Lord graciously minister. Simply say a word. You don't need to go to hospital. But let me tell you, those that the Lord puts in a way to mock us, it is written, the Lord will cause them to bend their knee low at the mention of the name of Jesus. They will come to the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as I reflect on this particular one, even as I plan to come to an end, friends, I want you to recall Nebuchadnezzar. Remember this man that was so sold to ensuring that the Lord, name of the Lord is put to shame. Do you know what happened in Daniel chapter 4 verse 34? The Lord walked in through the life of Daniel that King Nebuchadnezzar himself that had despised the Lord and the God of Daniel came to an understanding and he said, you know what? This God of Daniel is the only God. The very enemy of God was now humbled and he confessed the lordship of our God and savior, Jesus Christ. And so friends, if you arise and let the light of God shine through you, and this is not an easy order, it is a tall order to keep calm, even in circumstances that are overwhelming, to keep smiling and trusting God, even when things are hard. But friends, when we hang in there, the Lord puts the enemies of himself to shame by winning them over to him. Remember the centurion at the crucifixion of Jesus as he was supervising the killing of Jesus, but as people ran away, in the heat of the moment as things happen, he comes to an understanding and he says, you know what, the man that we crucified was indeed the son of God. Again, Jesus, God turning around events in the favor of 
those that believe and trust him, but also Paul the Apostle, before he has this Damascus encounter, once sold out despising and fighting the children of Israel, making their life impossible, and yet as he had an encounter with the Lord, the Lord won him over. And I want to believe that if the early believers held on to their light and did not continue to arise forcefully and shine the light of God by doing his work, it could be possible that probably many, and including Paul himself and you and me, would not have come to the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Friends, we have a God, and this is what has been giving me comfort in the midst of the many disturbing things this evening and afternoon, that we have that I serve a God that never changes. You know what? Our bodies might change, we grow old and our muscles get tired. I serve a God that is a constant, even in the midst of trust, he is a constant as he was in the beginning he is that is a midst of the, of, the, of the arrows the enemy throws that we have as i pray for myself brothers and sisters on call i equally pray for you that in the midst of all this that we are going through as first of all as a nation secondly as as families but also as individuals i want us to be encouraged by the fact that even when things around us change god is a constant and in the midst of the heat in the midst of this trying difficult time his call over my life is to arise not to take on a position of sleep and slumber but to arise as far as reading is what is concerned arise as far as spiritual disciplines are concerned fasting and praying and reading his word arise as far as doing things that bring him glory is concerned so that nations will be drawn to him but also the beauty is that as nations are drawn to God. They come with them gifts to bless his people, but also to bless himself. And the Lord blesses them equally. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord give you the tenacity, the grace to hang in there. May the Lord give you the boldness to arise from slumber. May he give you the grace to take on a position of being steadfast in him, to give you a position of those that are ready for action to arise and live for him no matter what, so that in the end, he will say to us, well done, my good and faithful servant. You are faithful with little. Come now, inherit the kingdom with me in the name of God who is Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Friends, the Lord bless you. The Lord watch over you. The Lord give you the grace as we go through this month, as we tarry, but as we also travail in prayer to be those that will arise and shine for him because our time has come, because his light is over us, but also because his glory has been shed upon us. The Lord bless you. Yes, yes Lord we, God. Uh, we thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for this time, oh God. But we thank you, first of all, for your servant, oh Lord God. Amid, amidst all trials, Lord, she has been able to minister to us, oh King of glory. Father, we come to say thank you, Lord our God. Let all the glory be back to you, King of glory. And Lord, we pray for, for her, my King of glory, at this moment, as she's <clears throat> struggling, oh God, my master, Lord, with the thoughts and all that about the patient, oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you alone, King of glory, the healer, my master, the all-knowing, the comforter. Lord God, I, I pray that you, you, you nurse the mother, King of glory. Pray, Lord. Lord God, that uh, you will, Father, find for her the best doctor, King of glory, the medicine, the finances, Lord, above all, my master, you touch her and bring healing, O King of glory, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for the word that she has taught us this evening, King of glory. It's about a, a rising and shining, O King of glory. Yes, Lord God, I pray my master, Lord, that all of us who are called by your name, O God, that we rise, O God, and shine, King of glory, my master, Lord, that we shall not, my master, cover ourselves, Lord God, my master, Lord, but we shall rise because you are the light, O King of glory, and shine, O my master. How she said, O Lord, 
Lord, that when we are sleeping, Lord, you are calling us to rise from slumber. Yes, many of us are believers, oh God. Father, Lord, we are in comfort zones, Lord, but this evening, we are, you are calling us to rise, oh God, my master, to come out from slumber, oh King of glory, to rise out from sleep, oh King of glory, to awake up my master, Lord. Father, how we are praying this evening, oh God, as you call us, Lord God, remove fear from us. Many of us, the Lord is calling us to rise oh, from our slumber and walk in the light and do the right thing. But fear, fear cover us. But this evening, Lord, we pray that you, you lead us into that state, oh King of glory, or oh, knowing that, Lord, as we've known the truth which sets us free, oh God, my master, that we shall not stay in slumber, that, Lord, we shall wake up and do the right thing, oh King of glory. Even us, oh God, who are already in you, oh God, there are times when issues come and we sleep and we slumber, all oh, we know and we forget that you've called us to rise, oh King of glory. My master, this evening, oh Lord, we thank you. We bless you, oh God, my master for the message that we've just heard by your, from your daughter, King of Glory. And Father, you're praying, oh Lord God, as a nation, oh God, yes, Lord, that the fears that are coming in, oh God, over all these other issues, oh God, as she talked about the, the COVID, yes, some people went through that experience. Now coming out, oh Lord, and getting comfort, Lord, other diseases are coming up, oh God. And Father, the question is, why all these diseases, oh God, are we slumbering, Lord? Are we still in, in, in a snoring state, oh God? Father, we pray, oh King of glory, that you take away every disease, oh God, my master. And if it has come, Lord, wake us up, oh God. Let us wake up, oh King of glory. Let us not ask you questions, but wake up and do the right thing, oh King of glory. If it is repentance, oh God, let us repent and turn back to you, King of glory. My master, we put our hope in you. We put our trust in you, O oh God, this evening, O oh King of glory. Lord, we want to thank you, King of glory, because you speak to us in the times and seasons, O oh God. In this season, O oh God, as the theme of the cathedral, O oh God, you are telling us to arise, O oh God, to shine, O oh God, King of glory. Not only to rise, O oh God, not only to arise, but also to shine, O oh King of glory. To shine, Lord, in you, King of glory. That means where, when we are to share in darkness is not supposed to be part of us, O King of glory. So Lord our God, this evening we pray, King of glory, may you shake us out of darkness, O God, as we shine into the world, O King of glory. Father, Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you, O King of glory, that you always come to remind us, O King of glory. Thank you for the message, O Lord, that you've reminded us, O King of glory. We thank you, O Lord. Lord, we bless you, we honor you, we exalt you, oh God, and we give you all the glory. And Lord, I'm praying for every person on this platform this evening, oh King of glory. The ears that have heard your word this evening, oh God, may we hear and act, oh God. May we not be just a hearer of the word, but let us also be doers, oh King of glory. My master, we thank you that you've given us these topics, oh God, to awaken us, oh God. Father, we, we pray that we shall put everything in practice as your children labor, oh God, to, 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 to break it into our understanding, oh King of glory. And therefore, I'm praying, oh God, for every person on this platform, oh God, that Lord, that, dark, that darkness has covered, oh King of glory, that is not shining, oh God, that uh, situations, oh Lord, have surrounded us, oh King of glory. And Lord, in Instead of rising, we are we are covering ourselves and hiding ourselves, oh God. So, my master, we pray that you alone, my master, let your light shine, oh God. Let you shine in us. Let you shine in darkness of this country, nation, Uganda, in Africa, Lord, in the entire, the entire world, oh King of glory. Father, we honor you. We give you thanks, oh God. We give you praise because we prayed all this through the name of Jesus Christ. Christ our Lord and Savior. And one say, Amen.